Hello guys, welcome to CADMAX. This is our class 12 part 2. So in this class we are going to discuss some of the constraints in assembly design workbench. So we will see different types of constraints like fixed constraint, coincidence constraint and so on. So firstly let's go to this assembly design workbench. You can directly click on this icon here. So, or else you can go to start mechanical design and assembly design so now this is our assembly design workbench so here let us create a, a simple example by creating a two different components uh, uh, by just uh, clicking on this part and clicking on this product I got one part here so this is the first part so the procedure that I followed now it belongs to the top down approach method so we have discussed about what is top down and bottom up approaches in assembly workbench in previous section in class 12 part 1 so in this class 12 part 2 we will be seeing all the different types of constraints that are present here if in this constraints toolbar you can see different types of constraints so we will see each one so firstly for that we need to create an example so let's go for this uh, top view and select this plane select the sketcher so conference sketcher here you are still in this assembly design so double double click in the let's just go to here or in this part double click so then we will be transferred to the part design workbench so now select the plane go to sketch so in this picture, let's create a rectangle. Okay. And create this. And okay, let's let's just create this. So now I'll go to this multi pad operation. So here we have two different types. So the coming to the first one, use a value as twenty. Sorry, twenty. And the coming to the second one, use a value as the value as 50 in the preview here click okay, ok so this is the multi pad operation you can create a multi pad in a single stage so after this so that's uh, the multi pad Sketch again and let's constrain the parameter here to the value of 60. Okay, after click the sketcher, so you created your first part here. So, if you want to create another part, just click on this, double click on this product file and again go to this part it is asking for origin point do you want to define a new origin point for a new part click s yes or no to define the origin point of the assembly as a new part origin point so i want to keep uh, uh, want to click no 
so that I will be using the same origin same origin I will be using to create a new part or else I can click S so I can have a new origin for the new part here I want so I'm just uh, clicking now so I will be using the same origin so just double click on this part uh, part design of paint and so click on this plane again for the texture and somewhere create a circle and then and some standard put the value of this C point Five. Just point to five clearance on each side of the circuit. Okay. And for it, the value is this. Uh, it's Okay. Now I did this picture, and it's a pad, and give the value is sixty. So we are having two different parts now. So now go for this assembly, click on product. So we will be transferred to this assembly of French again. So you can see all the different uh, constraints are highlighted here. So now uh, the first constraint I am going to tell you is the fixed constraint. So you right click and select snap automatically select this part and as the origin I had taken as the part 1 origin for the part 2 also so the compass has been get to the origin here yeah. so we can move it so you can see you can just Drag this wherever you want. So just select this, drag it, drop it, and now at least the movie snap. And uh, coming to the six, select the six and select the part. So you can see the constraint is applied to this part and let's try dragging this part here it can be dragged right So now, after dragging to different positions, you can see uh, the planes have been, which are mixed with the uh, part one planes, have been separated from this part one frame. So you can see them separately here. So now we have applied six constraint to this. So again, opening to this, this constraint is, I am going to say the coincidence constraint. So select this constraint and select this center axis and this one and if the constraint is applied as a coincidence constraint, you can click on the update button. Can click on find this update button. Can check somewhere. Where is it? Where is the update button?
Yeah, here you can find this in edit option. You can find this update. You can click on this or you can just click control plus U. Click this. You have to see and observe what happened here. The part one. Move it. Part one transfer to the position of part two, where the part two remains where as it is in, the, in that position without any movement. So the part one has been transferred to the central axis. So the both are now currently on the same axis. The reason for that is the part two has been you just undo it so this is the part 2 so previously I have applied a fixed option to this so it won't get positioned somewhere so I will change its position so it remains fixed whereas the part 1 which is free to move in any direction because as there is no fixed constraint applied to this so this can be movable so whereas the part 2 is fixed to this position so the when I applied the constant constraint the part 2 sorry the part 1 came to the part to, sorry, the part 2 came to the position of the part 1 came to the position of the part 2 as a result of the constant constraint so that's what happened here so this is how the fixed constraint works and this is how the constant constraint works so if I just uh, change the fixed constraint from part 2 to part 1 then uh, you will observe that the part 1 will be remain fixed and the part 2 will move to the position of the part 1 to satisfy the constant constraint so that's it guys about this control u so coming to the next one uh, it's a contact constraint so now let's apply the same constraint contact constraint right here select this contact constraint just go for select select the bottom portion of the ring of part 2 and the top portion of this part 1 and just if you click the control you can see the part one mode a little bit down so that to adjust the applied contact constraint between the part one and the part two because the part two remain part two remain fixed the part one mode to satisfy the contact constraint is applied right now so this is the contact constraint so you can see they are in the green color so this they are perfectly okay so there is no any problem with it so when the constraint will show the color other than the green color so suppose if you select the contact constraint and select the part 2 top face and uh, part 1 top face and click control U so you can see uh, the update diagnostic is showing the constraint is inconsistent the applied constraint now is inconsistent because so already in the previous applied constraint the contact constraint is applied to the as applied uh, we have seen earlier so 
is this uh, currently applied contact constraint so want that to be applied now so it needs to be uh, like overcome it need to it, uh, ignore the previously applied contact constraint to apply this currently applied contact constraint so it will show some uh, update diagnosis let's say it here so in that uh, whether you need to remove the previously applied contact constraint or you need to remove the currently applied contact constraint to adjust one of them so that it will be working so if you delete the previously applied contact constraint and now click control you uh, now the fresh constraint has been applied successfully so so in such cases where uh, the previously applied constraint uh, should should be deleted or need to be need to override the previously applied constraint to successfully apply the currently applied constraint if you think consistent or not at all this file so any one of the constraint need to be modified to make the changes so that is about this contact constraint so coming to the next one is offset constraint so you just select this offset constraint so this one and select the top face again and the top face again showing clearly showing that this constraint is fully redundant with these which are displayed also just click it and see the offset as 100 sorry 100 click ok and you let's click control u just click control u there's no reply from it as it is already shown the constraint that you applied is fully redundant uh, the reason is so previously you have applied the contact constraint so now in the now currently you applied again offset constraint so that part one phase and the part two it should be offset at a distance of 100 mm but it should to apply this constraint successfully you should not have the previously applied constraint that is a contact constraint so you can't apply two constraints which are giving quite opposite results at the same time so for that you need to uh, remove one of that constraint to successfully get the results here so you can see that 100 is not in a green color so it is not a, a proper constraint to be applied while the previous constraint is active so to delete the previous constraint like go to constraint surface contact constraint if you remove this constraint and now click on the control u control u update so now you can see the is 100 mm offset distance if you turn to green color so this shows clearly how the constraint need to be placed properly so that should not affect the previously applied constraint
So this is about the offset constraint. So just removing this and removing this coincidence constraint, removing this fix constraint and giving this. So uh, sorry, and giving the fix constraint to this part one. So let's go to this angle constant, select this Upload. and now I'm going to select this space and this space and the angle I want to be so you can use the perpendicularity parallelism options so if I select the perpendicularity and click OK and just click Ctrl U you can see the both faces are exactly perpendicular to each other. So this is how the perpendicularity works. And again, just undo this and again select this and it comes and select this both faces. And now I want to be parallel. Okay. So I'll click Ctrl U. So you can see the parallelism is applied here successfully. So the space and this space are parallel to each other. So now just undo this. Select this angle constraint again, select this space and this space again, and now I want to give the angle at 45 degrees and click OK. And uh, just select Ctrl U. Now you can see, so you can see that this space and this space are uh, at an angle of 45 degrees. So this is about the angle constraint. It's can apply the constraint so that the angle can be adjusted between the two different parts for successful assembly. So first thing of this one, two, three, four, five, five options and coming to the next one is the fix together. So coming to this fix together, so just undo this again. So let's select this fix together and select the first component and the part 2 and click OK. Now we can see this fix together constraint here. So first you try to uh, manipulate, select this part 1. Okay. So select this. I am going to select this part two. And you see, just select this one and use the manipulate option remove this with respect to constraint and select in the x direction of y or z or any plane or any rotation with respect to any axis so if I select and just selecting a z select this and then just move along z or you can just rotate travel along y or x so after doing this, uh, if I try to do for this the same and Y and Z. So you can see you can transmove the object individually here. So now if you want to after applying the fix together 
we need to select this with respect to constraints and now to try to try moving you can see that not possible to move any of the part here so what we need to do is just simply select select the stick constraint and delete this constraint and now just manipulate select any of the part and if you just move along x you can see the other part also moving along with it the same applies to this also the reason is the both parts are fixed together so that one part if you move one part the automatically the other fixed part will move along with that but you need to keep in mind that this with respect to constraint option need to be selected in the manipulation option so without selection without selecting this option here we can't move the parts you remove this uh, you can even move these parts but individually so if you select this with respect to constraints then this fix together comes into the picture then you can move them like a single object so that's it both this fix together so coming to this remaining options and all we'll see in the next class the class 12 part 3 uh, so with this we'll end this section of class 12 part 2 so see you in this next class and i will continue with the remaining options that are remaining still remaining in this assembly design of range so by the next class we will be closing this assembly design workbench and we will go to this drafting workbench so hope you enjoy the class any doubts please comment and please subscribe to my channel catman to like it have a good day guys bye bye